All right, let's get right into it. If you've ever wanted to jump into the Microbot project but weren't exactly sure where to start, well, consider this your official launch pad. We're gonna go from zero to your very first contribution, step by step. So, first things first, what is the Microbot Hub? Think of it as the official home for every plugin and script the community creates. And this separation is absolutely key. It's designed to keep the main Microbot client lean, fast, and super stable, while the hub becomes this amazing space for innovation. You get the best of both worlds, rock solid reliability with a constant flow of community creativity. And that really brings us to the entire mission behind the hub. It all boils down to this brilliant idea of separating the core application from all the amazing things the community builds. Let's dig into what that actually means for you. This slide really lays it all out. On one side, you've got the Microbot client. It's built to be stable and focused on just the essential features. Then you have the hub, and that's where all the action is. It's experimental, it's fast moving, and it's totally driven by new ideas from people like you. This setup is the secret sauce that lets the hub evolve so quickly without ever risking the core application's reliability. Getting up and running is literally a three-step dance. First, you just clone the repository from GitHub into your code editor. Super simple. Second, you build the whole project by running one little command, Gradle build. Now that the project is set up, this is where the real fun begins. We're gonna run a plugin, see how it all works, and most importantly, see how you can start debugging your own awesome creations. Let's see how this brings your code to life. Here is the absolute key to testing your work. Inside the project, you'll find a test class that basically acts like your own personal control switch. You just go in there and tell it which plugin you wanna work on. That's it. From that point, you can fire up the debugger right from your editor and step through your code while it's running live inside the Microbot client. So you can run a plugin, but what's actually in a plugin? What's it made of? Let's take a look under the hood and dissect the basic structure. Once you understand this blueprint, you're ready to build your own. We'll use the pest control plugin as our example here. You'll see the structure is really clean and simple. You've got your main Java files, which is where all the logic lives. Then there's a readme file to explain what it does and an images folder for any icons. See, it's a nice predictable layout for every plugin. Now. Tucked away inside your main Java file is what we call the plugin metadata. And this is so much more than just a bit of info. It's basically your plugin's business card. It's the first thing people see in the client, so having a clear name and a good description is absolutely crucial for helping users find and understand your work. 
And speaking of that metadata, let's talk version numbers. Every single time you make a change, you need to bump the version. We use what's called semantic versioning, major, minor, patch. This isn't just for looks, it tells a story. It clearly communicates to users if you've added a huge new feature or just fixed a tiny bug. Okay, you've now got all the technical pieces. You know how to set up, how to run, and how a plugin is structured.